salads. Previously, we discussed good conductors of electricity. So an object, a solid object that is able to conduct electricity well is known as a good conductor. Now, we're going to discuss those objects that do not conduct electricity well, which are known as insulators. Now, what exactly makes an object a good insulator? To answer this question, we're going to use the electron band theory of solids. So in the same way that we used the electron band theory of solids to help explain why objects conduct electricity, we're going to also use the band theory to help explain why certain objects insulate. And let's begin by recalling a bit of information about conductors. So, recall that inside solid metal conductors, the highest in energy electron band is only half filled. And that means the rest of it is half empty. It contains unoccupied energy quantum states. Now, these two regions, the half filled and the half empty regions, are found very close in energy. And so that means when we actually apply an electric, an electric potential difference, a voltage difference to our solid metal, our electrons can actually gain enough energy and transition between the half filled and the unoccupied quantum states. And as they move, as they transition, as they move within our unoccupied region, that creates an electric current and our solid is said to be a good conductor of electricity. So so once again, to see exactly what we mean, let's look at the following diagram. So the y-axis is our energy. As we go higher, the energy increases. Now, we have our highest in energy electron band, and only half of it actually contains our occupied quantum states in which the electrons are found. And that's why this is shown in blue. Now, this is our unoccupied quantum states, and that means electrons are not found in this region. However, when we apply an electric potential difference, because these two regions are very close in energy, these electrons up here can actually gain enough energy and jump to the unoccupied quantum states. And, and, and as they occupy these quantum states, they can move about and that creates an electric current. And so our object is said to be a good conductor of electricity. Now, in insulating objects, however, the highest electron band is completely occupied with electrons. And the next unoccupied energy band, or the next unoccupied quantum state of our atom, is separated by a very large energy barrier, known as the band energy barrier. So once again, to see exactly what we mean, let's look at the following diagram. So this describes what takes place inside good insulators. So the y-axis is the energy axis. This is our completely filled highest in energy electron band. And this is normally known as the valence band because it contains the outermost electrons of our atom known as the valence electrons. Now notice this valence band is separated from from our conduction band, the next in line, by a very high energy barrier known as the energy gap or the band energy gap. Now, inside the insulator, because these two states, the occupied and unoccupied, are separated by a very high energy barrier, when we do apply an electric potential difference to our solid object, our electrons cannot actually gain enough energy to transition and jump to this conduction band. And because electrons cannot transition to this electron, 
electron bend, we cannot actually create an electric current because electrons cannot move within this conduction band. And so that's exactly why certain objects, such as for example glass, do not conduct electricity very well because of the separation of energy. So, once again, inside the insulator, the valence band is separated from the conduction band by significant energy barrier. Uh, it, could be, uh, it could basically range from 5 electron volts to 10 electron volts, depending on what material we're actually describing. And this corresponds to a very large energy barrier. And so electrons cannot typically gain enough energy when we apply our electric potential difference. And so so our electric current cannot actually flow. Now we can also describe this same diagram by using our finite potential well. Remember inside solid objects the electrons are in a way trapped to that solid object and so we can describe our electrons as being inside rigid boxes or finite potential wells. So once again this E axis is our electric potential energy and these red sections are our potential wells. They correspond to electric potential barriers. Now, for some particular insulator, let's suppose we have these three electron bands. Now, the electron bands found that are closest to the nuclei of our metal are the inner electrons, and these bands correspond to the outer electrons. So, these are the valence bands. Now, because the valence bands are far away from the conduction band, we cannot, our electrons cannot actually actually gain enough energy to jump to these sections and so our object, our solid object will not be able to conduct electricity uh, very well and so we call them good insulators.